Hello, in this presentation we will pay bills within QuickBooks Online. We will have a comprehensive QuickBooks Online course soon, if not available yet. We also have a comprehensive Excel course which complements the QuickBooks courses and a QuickBooks Pro desktop version course you can find at the link below. Here we are on the QuickBooks Online dashboard. We will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. This time we're going to be entering bills. We're going to go through the scenario to entering bills and look through the process and then of course enter the bill. To do that, let's go through this drop down up top to see our normal business transactions. We're going to see this drop down which is grouping the transactions by customers, vendors, employees, and other. We're going to be paying bills and typically paying bills would be with a vendor. When you think about the pain of bills, you might be thinking, well, well, I'm paying with a check. Why don't we just write a check as we've seen in the past? The bills are going to be a little bit different in that we are going to be writing checks, of course, but we're going to use the process of the bills process and the pay bills in order to uh, write those checks. The benefit of this process is that we can then enter the bills when we receive the bills, we can group the bills, we can sort the bills, and then we can print them all at uh, one time as, as we go through and check off which ones we want to print. As opposed to the check, which typically would be used more when we just want to write the check at that particular time, at that particular moment. And oftentimes within business, it's going to be useful for us to put that information into the system, put the bills into the system, and try to decide which one of those bills we want to then pay and then pay them as we go. That'll help us out with the matching principle, meaning we can enter the bill uh, when we get it, when we incur the expense, rather than waiting to put it into the system when we pay it. And that's going to be an, a more accurate way for us to match up the income and expenses. So we shouldn't be putting the bills into the system when we pay it. Theoretically, we want to put them in there when we incurred it. Just like the idea if we haven't yet paid for our credit card, doesn't mean we haven't incurred all the expenses related to it. We still owe that money. We should be putting it into the system, not when we pay the credit card. Supposedly, when we when we incurred the expense, that's when we should be recognizing it, showing it on the income statement, not on cash. Of course, we haven't paid cash, but on the income statement to say, hey, we've, we've got these expenses. We want to take a look at when they were incurred, the month in which they were incurred, and see which months we're incurring more expenses or not, depending and not contingent on when we paid it, but on the consumption of those expenses. So to do that, we're going to go, we entered bills in the past. Now we're only going to have uh, a bill in there at the, at the moment. We'll just go through the process. So we have the bill here and we're going to go to the pay bills item. So we're in pay bills and here's the pay bills item. Now we only have the one bill here and this was in place when we first started the transaction. We entered this vendor and we had the bill that was in the opening balance when we uh, included this vendor. This is who we pay uh, for the guitars for meaning we buy and sell guitars in this business and this is the vendor that we buy from this was the opening balance we had when we first set up uh, the business many of the other transactions we focused more this month on transactions that are more cash related so we didn't go through the billing process we'll take a look more at it in uh, the second month of operations when we look at some other different transactions and more non-cash transactions when we enter a bill of course what that means is that it's it's not coming out of the checking account when we enter the bill it's going uh, to increase the expense at the time we put the bill in place or the asset in this case we increased an inventory asset at the time we purchased it and then the other side goes into a payable account a liability meaning we owe someone money and now of course we're picking those people that we owe money to these amounts represented generally in the accounts payable account and we're going to pay them off so whenever we see the pay bills, that means that accounts payable is going to go down. This pay bills represents the accounts payable account. Anything that's in the pay bill section mean we made a bill, we enter the bill, not a bill that we build our customers for, but a bill to us, bills that we owe from, um, from vendors. We entered those bills and now we have a payable that would be tracked in the accounts payable. So uh, now we're going to pay them off. We're just going to pay the one off. If we had more than one, of course, then we can really check off the, the ones that we want to pay and we can kind of decide which ones do we really need to pay and which ones can we wait and pay a little bit later at a little bit later date. When we go through this process, we have the checking account. We're going to say the pay date is going to be in our case. We want 01, say 01, 
January 28, 2021. The check number we're going to say is going to be auto populated at the 1010. We're not going to print these. If we were, then you want to have, you know, the, your stack of checks that will have, you know, still have to buy the checks that will have the pre-printed numbers on them and then use this system to put them in the printer and print the checks from here. And that's going to be it. So what we're going to say then, what's going to happen? Pay bills, remember, means accounts payable is going to go down. Specifically, the account payable related to us owing Epiphone money. The other side of it is going to be the fact that uh, the checking account is going to go down because we're writing the check. So we are, in essence, uh, writing a check. The, the difference between what we're doing here in writing a check and normally in the check writing process is that normally in the check writing process, we would have wrote the check check directly for the in, for the inventory, increasing inventory and decreasing the checking account. In this case, we're decreasing the checking account, but we're not recording the inventory, what we bought, the 15,000 worth of guitars. In this case, we are increasing uh, or decreasing a liability. We're not increasing the asset, what we got, an expense or an asset. We're, decre or we're decreasing the liability, what we owe, uh, in this case, to Epiphone, the accounts payable. So we'll take a look at that after we record this on the financial statements. So let's save and print. We're just going to save and print. And I'm going to close this out. I'm not actually going to print it. And we're going to say uh, X out of this. And let's go to our reports and see what we have. We're going to go to the reports on the left-hand side. We're going to go to the balance sheet. So let's type in balance sheet and see what happened. We're going to change the dates to the dates that we are working on, which is 010121 to 013121. So that's going to be January 1st, 2021 to January 31st, 2021. Let's run that report. If we scroll down, we see the checking account here. We wrote a check from the checking account. Let's see if we can find the check that we wrote from the checking account. Scrolling back down, we see the 15000 There it is. Other account is the accounts payable. We wrote it to Epiphone, and it does say that it's not only a check, but it says that it's a bill payment check, meaning it's still just a check, but we wrote it to a bill payment uh, section, meaning the other side most likely will be accounts payable. If we click on that item, we still see uh, an uh, item that looks like a check here. So we got the bill payment item. We have our data, our input screen here to pay that bill. We're going to close this back out. And then we're going to scroll back up. Go back to our report summary. And if we scroll down to the liability section, then in the accounts payable, we now have no accounts payable because we have no outstanding debts to anybody at this time. That's great in terms of short-term debts. In terms of accounts payable, we still have our Visa card down here. and We owe the state some money. We have this uh, loan, which is... Uh, there, but we have no short term accounts payable vendor debts. So if we s click on the zero, and it's nice that the online version note that still has the zero here because there's activity in the month, even though it's a zero balance at this time, which is kind of nice because that allows us to go in and and see the activity from this report using the um, zoom in feature. Which on the desktop version, many times, if it's a zero balance, whether activity in the month or not, typically removes the zero balances. So this is kind of nice for us to, to use as an, an option for us to, uh, to do more of this audit type stuff where we're going through and we're figuring out what has happened. And so if we go through here, we say that uh, the accounts payable had a $15,000 balance. We paid $15,000, reducing the balance that is owed in this case to Epiphone. And of course, if we select that, it's a bill payment check. Selecting that item, we then see the bill payment check here as well. No effect on net income or um, the profit and loss. It's important to note when we pay the bill. It's only the liability going down and the checking account going down. So in other words, even though we paid 15000 here, net income or the whole profit and loss is not affected. No revenue, no expense is affected.